What is up, you sexy beasts? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we are pumped to have you part of the tribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, just make sure you've done that. I release videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So three videos for your enjoyment every week. And today's one's a goodie. I, uh, I went a different route. I went deep um, into the, the numbers, into the research. And um, I just couldn't stop thinking last night about how many of the Mayhem athletes, how many Mayhem athletes qualified for the CrossFit Games. I just kept seeing Mayhem athlete after Mayhem athlete qualify. That's not even including the teams. And it got me thinking, which one of the training camps, the training brands, if you will, how many have they all qualified for the games? Which one is the best uh, to follow? And it kind of, the question arose in my head, like how much of a role does the actual programming play in the success and the quality of an athlete? So I went through all the qualifying athletes and I tried my best to figure out which program they follow. And uh, I'm gonna share that with you now. We'll go through, the only ones I'm gonna mention are the ones that qualified at least two athletes and more so two and more athletes so let's jump straight into it let's see the first camp we're going to go through is the misfit camp so they qualified two athletes um paige semenza from the syndicate crown and then caroline connors from the atlas so two athletes for Mis misfit's been around for years they've had great success uh qualifying teams and individuals to the games today we're just looking at the individuals um, then we have the training plan. This is Yami over in Iceland, and obviously they've got their team there as well with Annie. But as far as individuals go, the training plan qualified Hendrik Hapalainen from uh, Strength and Depth and BKG out of the Lowlands. Then let's step it up to three qualifiers. The Underdogs crew, Justin Kotler. Um, just an amazing training crew there, and they have qualified three people to the CrossFit Games. Uh, Ricky Garrard out of Torian, Danielle Brandon out of the MAC, and then Alex Kazan out of the Granite Games. Joining them is Training Think Tank, uh, Max, um, where Noah trained. So they qualified three athletes, Alexis Raktis, who I'm extremely excited about. Um, she narrowly missed out last year, and I've been waiting for her to qualify this year, and she did it very comfortably. So Alexis Raktis, Noah Olsen, and Travis Mayer. This is the camp where Sarah Sigma's daughter trains as well. Um, so three athletes qualified for them. Uh, who else we got? Dicker Comp, uh, Michelle Latondra, Ali Turner out of Torian, Patrick Valner out of the Atlas Games, and Freya Moosberger out of the Atlas Games as well. So three athletes qualifying for Michelle there out of Dicker Comp. Then Comtrain, good old Comtrain, um, Ben Bergeron. They have got Sydney. Um, I was not gonna I was not gonna struggle today with surnames. I was gonna just crank it out, you know. Michelin. Sydney Michelin. That was good. I nailed that. Out of the Mac. Cole Sager out of the Mac and Amanda Barnard out of the Granite Games. So there we go, three of them. Um, obviously we saw Sam Quant qualify. He no longer trains under Comtrain. He now just trains with one of the ex-coaches from Comtrain who now looks after him. And then obviously we also had, um, oh, I've gone blank. Chandler Smith, obviously a Chandler Smith out of this camp as well that did not qualify. Uh, this is the old camp of Katrin Davis' daughter. Who else has got three here? I think that's all the threes done. Then let's move on to the fours. My program, the HWPO program. They qualified four athletes um, over the semifinals. Jason Hopper out of Syndicate Crown. Mal O'Brien out of the Granite Games. Nicholas Joyelle, you may not have known, but Nicholas, uh, who qualified out of the Atlas Games, follows HWPO. And then Thuri Halgadotter out of Strength and Depth. So four athletes, pretty decent for a fairly new program. Uh, a program that is focused on the general population, more so to start with, and is now working with more elite athletes. So uh, very impressive to see already four athletes come uh, qualify out of the HWPO camp. Then who else got four? Brute Strength. Brute Strength, they have Roman Krinikov, Dallin Pepper, Spencer Panchik, and Phil Toon. And Brute Strength used to be the program for Kara Saunders, I believe, before she moved to Mayhem. Who else? The program. We have Jacqueline Dahlstrom, um, Solvig Sigardis Dorter, Dorter, 
Um, we have Gabriella Magawa and Moritz Fabink out of the Lowlands. So four athletes for that crew as well. Very well established crew, great coach. Uh, who else has got four? I think that is all the fours done. Moving on to the fives, Proven. Proven qualified five athletes as individuals. Clear that. Uh, Tia Claire Toomey, um, Cole Grishaba, 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 Cole, uh, Will Morad, Saxon Panchik, and Brooke Welt. So five athletes out of Proven. And then, just a little jump, just a little jump from five at Proven to 13 at Mayhem. So Mayhem qualified Kara Saunders out of Torian, Baden Brown out of Torian, Hayley Adams, Syndicate Crown, Christine Collenbrander, Syndicate Crown, Bailey Rail, Mac, Paige Powers, Atlas Games, Alexandra Carone, Atlas Games, Alex Vino, Atlas Games, Lazard Jukic, Lo uh, Lowlands, Udis Upenix, Lowlands, Michelle Moran out of Cape Town, Gimel Heros, Copasaur, and Vicky, Victoria Campos, Copasaur. 13 individuals from the Mayhem team. And so, the question for today, the question I want to discuss, I want to hear from you guys is, Obviously, you can have a great athlete join a training camp or training group, an athlete that was already gonna succeed and do well. How much of an impact does that training program have on the athlete? And at what point do you look at a training camp and go, okay, there's enough numbers there now, enough, enough individuals have qualified to really speak and say something about the program. I think Mayhem is a great example. Like you can have one or two athletes qualify and you're like, oh, is it the program or is the athlete just great? But when you have 13 individuals qualify and not all these athletes work, you know, in person, one-on-one -on -one with the coaches, a lot of them just work remotely uh, with the online programming. I do believe that Mayhem has an, ex uh, an exceptional network of coaches that actually input into the athletes individually and athletes can reach out to a coach and get some specific input on their weaknesses and what they want to work on. But yeah, what do you guys think? You know, like, the program, it's one cog in the wheel that makes a great, successful athlete. Obviously, there's many other factors, but what I want to know from you guys is how important is it that the athlete chooses a correct camp? How much of a role does it play? And is it better to actually go individual, like to just work individually with a coach and not be in a training camp as such? The vast majority of the athletes that I looked at on the list um, train under a camp or with a group or part of some kind of brand. And then there's people like Brent Fikowski and others, they just train by themselves, program for themselves, do their own thing, um, and they have success as well. So what are the pros and cons, do you think, of training with a group versus training by yourself? Let's discuss it down in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts. You know, we can look at an athlete like Mal O'Brien or an athlete like Guy Malheros, and we can say that no matter who's gonna coach them, they're gonna succeed. They have the natural ability, um, they have the attitude to work hard. So no matter where you put them, they're gonna succeed. But surely you can't take away the expertise, the knowledge, the wisdom of someone like a Matt Fraser inputting into Mal or a Rich Froning inputting into Guy. You know, there has to be you have to recognize that there's value there and that they would take that athlete to a level that perhaps they wouldn't be able to get to under someone else or by themselves. And that is the hard little thing to quantify, like how much does that matter? How much does it matter? How how different are these programs really, you know? I feel like the Mayhem program does have its very unique flavor, you know, when it comes to things like um, rope climbs and GHDs, I know that there's a disproportionate amount of some of those movements programmed compared to other other programs um, maybe you guys have some insights you know if you follow one of these programs maybe you follow a proven or a mayhem or a hwpo um, are there any movements that you feel are very heavy heavily involved in that program um, and do you know the reasoning for that and what do you think what do you think is the reason for the success of the mayhem empire there are 13 individual athletes as a three or four teams um, so usually hugely successful and there's obviously something about the programming. It's not just that the athletes are great. There must be something about the program to see that level of success. So um, yeah, that's my thoughts for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys are as curious as me when it comes to this stuff. And I hope you have some insights because I don't know all the answers, but um, I was wondering about this one. So let me know what you think. Get involved in the comments. 
And let me know what you think of this little backdrop here in the garage, you know. Just quickly whipped this up this morning. I thought I'll try something different. Guys, stay sexy, keep roaring love, and I'll see you real soon. Bye. <laughs>